Welcome to another installment of Head First JavaScript Programming Teasers. When you first begin learning JavaScript, you'll probably hear a lot about the DOM, especially if you're learning to use JavaScript in web pages, as most people do when they're first starting out. The DOM, or Document Object Model, is how the browser represents your web page internally. It's also the way that you can get access to the content of your page in JavaScript to manipulate that content by changing it, which is what makes web pages dynamic. The DOM might be a little tricky to wrap your head around at first because it's not something that you can literally see. You have to imagine it. But you'll need to understand how it works so you can use it in your JavaScript. So let's take a closer look at how the browser builds the DOM when it loads your web page. As you know, a web page is made from HTML. To make a web page, you write HTML, save it in a file, and then test it by loading that file into a browser. You can see the content of your HTML elements in the browser window as it displays your page. When you first start writing HTML, it's tempting to think of the HTML as a way to control the presentation of your content or how it appears in the browser. But HTML is really about structure, not presentation. Yes, the browser does have a default way of presenting the content of your HTML elements, but what's important is not how it looks, but how it's structured. The reason that structure is important is because what the browser does with your HTML behind the scenes is create the document object model, or DOM, that mirrors how your HTML is structured. So if you have a body that contains a heading and a paragraph, and that paragraph contains an EM element, then the structure the browser creates for the DOM is going to mirror that. We typically depict the DOM as a tree of objects. In this case, tree is a technical term describing how the various objects in the DOM are connected together. But thinking of the DOM as being like a real tree, an upside down tree, is a good way to help you remember what the DOM is. Notice how the tree structure of the DOM matches the nested structure of your HTML. All your elements are nested inside the HTML element, and that's at the top of the tree. Below that, we have a head and a body. The meta, title, and script elements are nested inside the head, while the h1, h2, and p elements are all nested inside the body. And then finally, the em element is nested within the p element. This nested structure of your HTML is the same as the tree structure of the DOM. We've labeled all the objects in the DOM tree with the name of the element from the HTML that each object corresponds with, except for the very top or root of the tree, which is labeled document. And I'll come back to document in just a moment. Each of these objects in the tree is an element object, which is a JavaScript object that represents that element in your HTML. So the h1 object in the DOM represents the h1 object in your page. If you want to change that h1 element with JavaScript, you'll use the h1 object in the DOM to do it. The document object at the top of the DOM tree is a little different because it doesn't have an element in your HTML that it corresponds with. We show the document object at the top of the tree because this object is how you get access to all the other objects in the DOM. One of the most common ways you'll use the document to get access to these objects is with the document.getElementById method. GetElementById is a method of the document object, and you can use it to get any element by its ID. In this example, I've added an ID to the h1 element in my HTML, and I've given this ID the name top heading. Now that I've added that ID to the HTML, when I load the page in the browser, that ID will also be stored in the DOM. And when I write the code document.getElementById and pass in the string top heading as the argument, the browser looks for an element with that ID in the DOM and then returns that element object to my code. If I store the resulting object in a variable, I now have a handle to that element in my page and I can do things with it. Like any object in JavaScript, an element object has properties you can use to get information about that object. And by modifying these properties, you can even change the element, which will change what's in your page. So for instance, every element object has a property named inner HTML that you can use to get and set the content of that element. 
If you change the value of that property, you're changing the content of the element. Let's give that a try. Here, after I get the H1 element from the DOM using document.getElementById, I can set its inner HTML property to a new value. This changes the content of the H1 element. When you change the content of an element with JavaScript code, you'll immediately see the new value of the element in the web page. That's because when you modify an element object in the DOM, you're modifying your page. The trick to understanding this is to realize that the DOM is your page. What you write in HTML determines what objects are in the DOM. And if you modify the DOM, you modify your page. When you're learning JavaScript, you'll discover that almost everything you do uses objects in some way. For instance, when you're working with the DOM, you'll use the document object to get access to all the other objects in the DOM. And every element object in the DOM is an object with properties that you'll use to access and change data in your page. There are three categories of objects that you'll work with in JavaScript. The first is the core language objects. These are objects that are part of JavaScript, like array, math, and date. Whether you use JavaScript in the browser or in some other environment, like Node.js, or even in an application like Photoshop, you'll generally find that the core language objects are the same. The second category is user objects. These are objects you make yourself. They're entirely up to you, and so they'll be different in every application you write, depending on what that application needs to do. But the way that you create objects will be the same, whether you're writing JavaScript for the browser or for another environment. The third category of objects is known as the host objects. And these objects are specific to the environment in which you're writing JavaScript. The document object, which you use to get access to the DOM, is one of these host objects, which means it's specific to the browser environment. You use the document object and the other host objects like window and history and element objects like h1, h2, and form to do things in the browser, like get data from your page and modify the page with your code. But keep in mind, if you're writing JavaScript for a server-side application like in Node.js, for instance, you won't find these browser-related objects. Instead, you'll find host objects that are specific to Node.js. You can learn a lot more about working with the DOM in head-first JavaScript programming. And that's it for this installment of Head First JavaScript Programming Teasers.